Now, we talked a lot about the glycemic effect and the damaging effects of insulin and how insulin accelerates atherosclerosis, makes you gain weight. If you're a type 1 diabetic and you have to give yourself insulin every day, you recognize that a type 1 diabetic is at a higher risk of a premature death and a higher risk of developing a heart attack before age 50. And they have incredible heightened risks of kidney failure and morbidity and mortality and leg amputations and all types of dangerous things happen to them. Why do these things happen to the type 1 diabetic? Why? What? They need some insulin because they don't producing any. It's because they're eating a diet that requires them to use too much insulin. And their diabetologists and endocrinologists are telling them, just take enough insulin to keep your glucose is favorable. It's because of the way the medical profession is treating the diabetics that way, and we're killing them. We're killing diabetics because we're letting them control their sugars with insulin instead of telling them that they shouldn't be using more than 25 units of insulin a day. And they better change their diet sufficiently so they don't use more than that much insulin a day. Because if they have to use 30 or 60 or 70 units of insulin a day, they're going to be in big trouble, which they are. They think they can use any amount of insulin to cover what they're eating. They should change what they're eating so they don't need so much insulin. Did you follow that, the difference? My type 1 diabetics cut back their insulin use by two-thirds. They only need one-third the amount of insulin they were, utilize, they were using when they were treated by, the, by their, following their advice of their endocrinologists. And therefore, they can live to be 100 years old in good health. Because because it's not the type 1 diabetes that kills people. It's the excess insulin that killed them. Now, a type 2 diabetic, their body's producing too much insulin. They're producing too much of their own insulin. Because as you gain weight on your body, it blocks the utilization and the uptake of insulin. So the pancreas has to produce more insulin and more insulin and more insulin. So here I weigh 150 pounds and my body only needs 10 units of insulin a day. Here at 160 pounds, I use 20 units of insulin a day. And at 175 pounds, 50 units of insulin a day. At 200 pounds, 100 units of insulin a day. That's 10 times the amount of insulin I need at 150 pounds. 10 times the amount. And that extra insulin promotes angiogenesis, promotes cellular replication, promotes cancer, promotes the deposition of atherosclerosis. It accelerates aging of the brain. When you gain weight, your body's producing hormones that are unfavorable. And one of those hormones it's producing unfavorable is insulin. But fat cells also produce estrogen. So your diet has to be hormonally favorable, is what I'm getting at here. And the hormones we're talking about are insulin and insulin-like growth factor one. IGF-1. It's called insulin-like growth factor 1 because it's shaped like the insulin molecule. It binds to the insulin receptor. It's a growth-promoting hormone. You need it when you're a baby growing, but when you have this, all these growth hormones circling when you're an adult, you grow wider. You don't grow taller. And you grow tumors, and you grow and, and plaque in the blood vessels is a tumor. Your plaque in your heart causes a heart attack. It's like a tumor that's promoted by hormones and by inflammation. An excess amount of insulin promotes Heart, heart disease and excess IGF-1 promotes heart disease. And it's dangerous to have IGF-1. And the food that promotes IGF-1 the most are animal proteins. Not, the more you have your diet, the more proteins you get from plants, you lower your levels of IGF-1 because the proteins are not as biologically complete. The animal proteins like egg whites and white meat chicken promote IGF-1 more aggressively because the proteins are more biologically complete. If they're more biologically complete, which we learned in grade school, they can come into the bloodstream in a bolus formation. They can come in the bloodstream more rapidly. Already in their complete form, excessive growth hormones are then promoted. We take in plant proteins, like beans and green vegetables and seeds and whole grains, which are high in protein, by the way, right? Because a burger is like 30% protein. You know, but nuts and seeds are like 20 to 30 percent. Wheat germ is like 30 percent. Beans are mostly about 30 percent, but maybe beans have more protein than 30 percent because I already told you that 15 to 20 percent of their carbohydrates are not absorbable to the body. So that if you take away the carbohydrate and throw them away, it makes the protein come up to 35 percent as a percent of total ca absorbable calories. Did you follow that? But the point is they're higher in protein. Why is the bean or the nut or seed or certain nuts and seeds like Mediterranean pine nuts and hemp seeds are higher in protein than meat? 
But why is the protein in hemp seeds and pine nuts and beans not going to raise IGF-1? Because the proteins are made biologically complete more slowly by digesting some of the bacteria that comes in over, over hours to make them biologically complete. By digesting some of your own body, some of the lining of the cells get digested. You mix and match proteins with other foods that have the other amino acids that are, to, to make them more even, to make them more utilizable by the body. The point is, is that if you trace the how biologically complete hormones proteins being formed in the bloodstream, it will be happening over a few hours, a little bit at a time, and not coming in all at one shot in a large load, which makes us the hormone spike high. Did you follow that? We know that when, when you get your protein from plants, it's packaged with all these antioxidants and fibers that are protective, but also the proteins come into the bloodstream slower, so you don't push up the IGF-1 too high, and lower levels of IGF-1 are associated with slower aging, maintenance of the size of the brain, less inflammation, and more insulin sensitivity, so your pancreas doesn't work as hard to produce so much insulin. So we're saying here that animal products, especially dairy products, have a different biological effects than when you get your protein from a hemp seed or an edamame or, or a whole grain wheat or oats or quinoa, right? Or vegetables, bro broccoli is like 40%, 45% protein. It's a high protein food, more protein per calorie than meat does. But different biological effects. Plant foods are not low in protein. They're just slower absorbed into the bloodstream. You're not, and because they're slower absorbed and not pushing growth hormone that high, you're not going to be a 350-pound linebacker on an NFL football team. You can be strong and muscular, and a lot of world-class athletes today are maintaining their strength and fitness, including you know, the top tennis players in the world, top, some top basketball players, even, Tom, you know, even like Tom Brady, but they're maintaining their health and fitness with healthy eating, sure. But you're not going to be huge. You're not going to be 300 pounds, but, but that's why the linebackers on football teams have the shortest lifespan of any profession in North America. Most heart attack rate, most sudden death, most dangerous. They, you know, they're trying to get that big, and you eat foods to get huge, and you shorten your lifespan. You don't want to be huge. So look, it says, you increase IGF-1 from every 5% increase in calories. Now here's the point is, is that the, le the link between IGF-1 and cancer is well accepted by all nutritional scientists the world over today. We know that breast cancer and prostate cancer, or even prostate enlargement, is fueled by high circulating levels of IGF-1 in Americans. We could test your blood test for an IGF-1. The average American runs between 200 and 250. It should be running between probably 125 and 175, way lower than the average American. You can't eat all these animal products. Remember I said to you an hour, a couple, an hour and a half ago, I said to you, a bagel is like a piece of chicken. And I said, why is a bagel like a piece of chicken? And you said to me, because neither one has a significant micronutrient load and they don't contain any antioxidants or phytochemicals and they're both rich sources of macronutrients of calories with no signal. No, isn't that what you said to me, something like that? So now I'm saying to you, a bagel is like a piece of chicken all over again. So now give me a different answer. Why is a bagel like a piece of chicken? Not the same answer you gave me an hour ago. I want a new answer. Chicken would be worse. They both produce hormones that are cancer promoting. The chicken produces more IGF-1, the bagel produces more insulin. They're both hormonally, foods that are hormon hormonally au favorable, and they're both, both very powerfully increase fat storage in the body because of their effects on hormones over and above their source of calories. But the fact that they're calorically concentrated is one thing, but they reduce fat storage, aging, and damage the body excessively over their caloric content. Did you follow that now? Because of their hormonal effects. 